Hello everybody. I'm going to be playing a new run through of an apocalypse mode for a character, and I figured it'd be handy to walk through the mods list in its own separate video. That way, I can just refer back to it if people have questions and they can watch that independently rather than trying to answer everything individually through streams. So, going into my mod list here, the first one is the 82 Oshkosh M911. That's the military trucks and trailers. These are incredibly handy, especially for the playthrough that I plan on doing, which is going to be starting in Riverside, then going to Raven Creek, and ending up in Louisville. There might be differences in how I go about that. For example, there are video tapes that you can get for XP gains in Louisville, but there aren't any in Raven Creek. So it would probably make more sense to make Raven Creek the final destination. But for the purposes of this video, the trailers that are there are going to be incredibly handy for transferring items in one base to the next, depending on which city we go to. And being Apocalypse, there's going to be a heavy respawn rate, so being gone for several days, it's going to keep adding zombies back in. Doing base transferal likely won't be happening all that often. Next up we have the P-19A and other military trailers. I've never actually used these vehicles, I've seen a couple of my other single player playthroughs, but I think I just like having them more for the immersion aspect, seeing more military vehicles around makes it feel more like the military was involved with the Nox event. Same goes for this one, although I do enjoy riding around in this vehicle as well. The four color Bic Pen, I'm not a big fan of lugging around four different types of colors and crayons and all this other crap, just so I can distinguish different symbols on my map. So this allows you to carry one item at a time, and that's really handy. Advanced Volume Enabler, I have this one on because I think that the shotgun volume is a bit too loud, and all gun volume in particular. So I have this on so I can reduce the gun sounds just for my own hearing. The Agrosar Farming Company mod adds farming vehicles and such. I have never actually found a working tractor in game, but maybe this playthrough will be different when we can find one and add it to our collection. Same with Aquasar Yacht Club. I've never found any boats, nor have I made it a point on my enemy and my other playthroughs to go through and use it. But maybe this playthrough will be different, and we can nab a boat and use it at some point. Authentic Z. This is just for my own personal enjoyment, because I like seeing unique zombies and having specific outfits and seeing, you know, pop culture references and such. So this allows me to satiate that one, while also with the mannequins in game, allow you to put them back onto the mannequins, and on my bases you usually have somewhere that you can walk through and just see all the different outfits. Backpacks Plus, if you find any of the backpacks, for example the big hiking bag or the military backpack, you can upgrade it with space and makes items backpack attachable, for example water bottles. You can add water bottles so that you can wear them like a belt wears items. The Autosar Motor Club. In my last playthrough, I did manage to find a key to the ATV, and that was a pretty nifty vehicle to ride around in. But the lack of any storage space kinda kills the need for it. Autosar Trailers. This is a wonderful mod that adds different types of trailers to the game for utility purposes. For example, there's a generator trailer and a gas storage trailer. So with the fuel storage trailer, you can take that up to a gas pump, fill it up, and take the trailer back to your base full of gas, and from there, dole it out. 
that saves you having to run to the gas station for small trips to fill up 30 different gas cans just so you've got gas cans available for your generator. I've got a vehicle mod for buses. I've never actually used the bus just because I've had other vehicles at the time and generally my runs haven't lasted so long as that, but I would like to in this playthrough have one of each type of vehicle and fully kitted out. Here's a sports car. Another sports car. The Jeep Rungle. This is one that I have found through multiple playthroughs, but I've never found with a key. So usually by the time I find it, I've had other vehicles to use and haven't used any of the stuff that I've picked up to upgrade it. And that's because mechanics takes a while to level up. I'm hoping to avoid that this go through and hopefully find some car zone videos, upgrade mechanics quickly, and start upgrading vehicles sooner. Bedford Falls was a map that I played through about six months ago, and when I was going through there, I enjoyed the layout, but I found that some of the inventory containers were spawning loot that I didn't expect. So I would go into a certain building, expect to find something, and it wasn't useful loot. I think that may have been changed, but we'll see at some point in this playthrough if that has. Bedford Falls is a destination to loot through. Better lockpicking. This adds two abilities, one to check alarms on vehicles and houses, and the other to do lockpicking with a bobby pin or a crowbar. Now, the alarm checking one and the lockpicking one have a trait that you can have that gives you the skills to start with, or you find the skill books to learn those abilities. We are going to spawn in Riverside, so that has two libraries we're going to be able to hit, and hopefully we'll be able to find both of those books to make things a lot easier on us. Better sorting changes the suffix when you have the inventory open, and it allows you to more easily sort through items. Better hand wash. In the default settings, every single item that you wash uses the same amount of water. With this mod, depending on what you're washing, it will reduce the amount of water that you're using. For example, if you're washing socks, that's going to use less water than washing a jacket. Blackwood is a map that I've downloaded but never actually been to. If we happen to come across it in-game, that'll be a destination to go and see. Book Collection is a quality of life mod that renames books and makes sorting through them very easy, at least for me. It makes it 1 through 5 for each category, carpentry, electricity, etc. And I like that. This mod allows you to bottle meat and preserve it. Bottled meat keeps for an exceptionally long time if it's not refrigerated. It is still a perishable item, however, so if you do have refrigeration, it lasts even longer. Unfortunately, I never seem to be able to find all the pieces to jars and enough salt to be able to do that, but maybe this time will be different. Combat Text is a really handy mod that provides the health bars for zombies, and whenever you do damage, a small floating text for how much you've done. Cool Bag allows you to transport food on the go as though it were refrigerated. It's a fairly small amount, but it is handy, especially on Apocalypse, if you can find all the items and create it, because you can keep food going from place to place without needing to resort to eating it on the same day you make it. Easy Comp Pick is required for other mods. Easy Engine Rebuild. When you have all the experience and items necessary, you can repair the engine quality and the stats of the engine itself. 
I find that's more useful than always searching for a different vehicle that has slightly better engine stats. Egg on fanny pack for balancing. I am a hoarder when it comes to loot. I believe the affectionate term referred to as loot goblins. The fanny packs allow me to organize the items that I bring with me whenever I'm going places. I usually have two, one for tools and one for medical supplies. So the fanny pack balancing here changes some values to make it balanced, you could say. The expanded helicopter events mod I've had some issues in the past with this mod, specifically with the raider or police, one of the ones that shoots, will hover for a very long amount of time, we're talking several in-game days, and when I leave the area and go find it the next day, I usually have to log out and log back in because the helicopter is still there shooting. When you log out and log back in, the event no longer happens, but nor do the nearby zombies that it killed. So, hopefully we don't run into that with this game, but that's something to look out for. The variety is very nice when it comes to the different helicopter events. The original with just one helicopter coming through, it provides some difficulty, but these are nice. Extra map symbols is exactly what it says on the tin. Gives you extra symbols to use for mapping out layouts. I think this is handy because I like looking at the map and planning things out. This is a firearms mod that doesn't go overboard. It adds a few different types and the associated attachments with them. I like this more than Brita's because it doesn't feel like on every single zombie and every single container there's another gun that you're finding. Yeah, it's Kentucky and they have a lot of guns, but there aren't that many guns. So this just helps me add a bit more to immersion while adding variety. This patch works with the better sorting mod mentioned earlier. Fort Benning is a new map that I'm going to try out on this run through if we're lucky. Fort Redstone is located outside Rosewood. I've never actually found it, so maybe we'll be able to do so this time around on the way into Raven Creek. Fuel Side Indicator is a mod that adds a little icon so you don't need to fuss about with which side of the gas pump you go on to refuel. Immersive Solar Relays as adds a separate way of powering your base other than generators. I've never actually found all the pieces and been able to hook them up all at once in the same playthrough. I'll usually find a battery here or the inverter there, but never everything all at once. I'm hoping this playthrough is going to be long enough and we'll be able to keep hold of our stuff long enough to be able to make a solar power base. Louisville spawn points is handy but not going to be useful for us on this playthrough just because we're going to be starting with the more trait mod and the burn ward patient trait and that's going to mean starting in a high population area is essentially just a death sentence. That's why we're going with Riverside, so we're not actually going to be using a Louisville spawn point here. Minimal display bars adds the bars that you see in the window here related to your different stats. I, when I first started, wasn't great about relating the Moodles to the actual stat loss and gain themselves. This mod made it exceptionally clear just how to manage different aspects of the game. For example, if you take the high thirst mod, 
your thirst meter here will shorten the notches until the next moodle. So each of these notches represents the next stage. And so when you take high thirst, those notches appear shorter. Same if you take the hearty appetite trait for hunger. Mod options is used by other mods. More maps adds maps to a lot of different areas, including Louisville, which is really handy. More traits I mentioned earlier. This one adds a lot of traits that we're going to be walking through, and frankly, I think they add a lot of variety to the game that you're not going to find by default. It would be nice if the devs for Project Zomboid eventually did end up making more traits besides the mod itself. I disabled the prepared traits because it's kind of spammy every time you start a new game to see these. But they can come in handy every now and again, especially depending on if you're playing a roleplay. The specialization traits I've used from time to time, but they're generally expensive, so I stay away from them. Playable Arcade Machines allows us to use arcade machines that you find in-game. The downside is that they make noise and require power. The upside is that they reduce boredom, unhappiness, and stress. When we find a large enough base, those will be really handy. Profession Framework is required by the lockpicking mod that we found earlier. This one is required because the burglar profession includes the alarm checking and lock picking mods that we have. This is a patch for the profession mod that allows it to work with build 41. Raven Creek is our end zone destination. This is a map that the makers of the map intended to be a location that started kind of as ground zero. So when you first arrive the city is going to be boarded up, you're going to see a lot of wrecked vehicles, you're going to see high-rise towers that have tons of zombies everywhere. It's a fun place to be, but we're not going to be able to get there for a long time. And likewise, since we're not starting in a high population area, we're also not going to be spawning there. The remastered Kitsune's Crossbow mod adds crossbows to the game, which I really like. I think it's handy to have a silent, long-range weapon. And this mod also adds skill books to increase XP rate gain for the reloading and aiming skills. Repair Any Clothes does what it says, allows you to make repairs to the clothes that you have. Rotator's library is necessary for the bobby pin when you're doing the lock picking ability. That uses a rotator style interface like you'd find on Skyrim. Show XP gain is a wonderful little mod that whenever you increase your XP on a skill, you get a little floating text ahead that says what you leveled up in and how much. It also shows what you leveled up in when you do level up. Skill Recovery Journal. I'm never really a fan of doing the hardcore, if you die you lose everything playthroughs. Yeah, I'll do that for short term ones, but for long term plays, I generally find it more fun to use this mod and others. So this one, when you create by crafting this journal in-game, your current character can transcribe their current XP totals into it. If a new character were to read that book, by default settings, they would gain 70% of the total amount of the previous character's total amount. So that 
leaves you with an incentive not to die, but not so much to start from scratch every single time other than just having a base setup. The loss of XP is what I find generally to be the world killer for me. Spear Traps allows you to build a grave and then put spears into it, and this will damage zombies. I think up to five zombies will get killed if by walking over them. This is cool to put outside of different areas that you don't intend to be walking over. Since you're unable to edit these mod settings on Apocalypse, the default is that it will also damage the player. So don't put it anywhere you're not going to be able to see, or places that you're going to be walking through often. They knew. This generates a special zombie that has an item on it called Zomboxivir. If you get bitten, you have a 100% chance to contract the Nox zombification virus, and if you get lacerated, that's 25%, scratches are 7%. This item, Zomboxivir, if you use it, allows you to remove the zombification status from your character. The default settings make the zombie pretty rare, you're not going to be finding too many of them. So you're still adding that element of risk, especially on Apocalypse, where if you do find one, you need to be able to single it out and kill it, usually within a group. So there are trade-offs to using this. It's again to stave off losing a character that you've invested a lot into, usually on an off-handed scratch or something like that. Tools back. This is a mod that if you do something like disassemble furniture, you will return the item that you were previously having equipped back into your hands. So if you had a crowbar or a tire pump, that would be returned back to your inventory after you are done with that action. It's pretty handy. Treads military vehicle spawn zones adds spawning zones for military vehicles and that allows them to be generated outside of places like Fort Benning or Fort Redstone or Raven Creek. I think that adds for some immersion you don't see them everywhere. True Actions. This is just an immersion mod that lets your character lie down on furniture like sofas or beds. Dancing is the same route. It allows your character to dance if you find the skill books that allow them to do so. There are also special cereals that you can find that when you open them, they give you a unique card that, when you have it in your inventory, lets you do a special dance. Common Library is necessary for the SARS vehicle mods that we have up above and some other vehicle mods used elsewhere. Vehicle Repair Overhaul allows you to repair all the different parts of vehicles, for example light bars and glove boxes. Vehicle Salvage lets you salvage wrecked vehicles and get them off the road. Viparol's Recycling Center allows you to craft different recipes, for example belts, and recycle unneeded materials like jewelry. Frankly, I just think it's a bit of a time waster to go through all that fuff for that, but you have the ability. The Vehicle Spare Parts, this allows you to craft vehicle parts, like tires or windows. W900 Semi Truck is added to the game, and this is in the same vein as the military trucks up above. You're able to tow large containers and military tractor trailers. The water semi trailers adds a humongous water trailer to the game. I've never seen one that hasn't been wrecked, but if you do, man, you've got water for years in there. 
I have, however, seen these two, and you can add these on the back of regular vehicles. These do the same function. You add in a water filter, and you put water in, or you allow it to collect through rain, and you can use it to provide water in whatever item you have. These are exceptionally handy if you play a foraging playthrough. You can hook it up to a vehicle, go to wherever you're at, if you're not by a water source, like a lake. And this will give you clean water. The weapon condition indicator allows you to, at a glance, see the condition of the weapon so you don't end up running it down and breaking it before you have a chance to get another one. The US Point expansion is nice, however, the developer has not yet added the map icons to it, so you kind of are walking around blind when you do so. However, it is a well done area when you get to it. I happened to go by the fire station that's next door to this town hall area, and it was a nice place to start. This is for jarred food. You can use it the same as the meat jarring mod we had earlier. And this one adds a bulldozer to the game that's just plain fun to have. If you do end up being able to use it either through hot wiring or through a key, the front bulldozer section is indestructible, so you can use that to run over zombies or through different terrain and it will run down the items. That's pretty cool. And that wraps up all the mods that we'll be using for this playthrough. Thank you for watching.